Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Wake Up Legendary. It's Wednesday, September 14th. My name is Matt. If you don't already know me, I am the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer here at Legendary. And we are live. We go live every single Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. And uh, we call it Wake Up Legendary because we want to give people in our community an opportunity to wake up not on fake uh, on I almost said fake news. I said not on Fox News or on CNN or on you could call you could call them fake news, whatever. But um, <laughs> you can wake up with somebody who's inspiring, who's um, having a lot of success. You can see what they're doing. You can listen to what's driving them uh, and use it as a little bit of motivation and inspiration for yourself. So. Uh, today we've got, um, uh, I think, like a multi-returning guest. I don't know. Uh, he's definitely been on a couple of times. He's spoken at one of our masterminds. Steve, what up? Hey, hey man. Good to-, Good to have you on. How are you? How are you? Man, I'm fantastic. Another beautiful day in Michigan. How you doing? Yeah, it's good here. It's um, it's we're finally getting out of the hundreds, so it's like um. Um, man, it's like like 79 degrees and and it's only 7 a.m. So it's like, it's it's going to be hot. hot, It's going to be hot. It's all right. It's all right. (laughs) That sounds like So, uh, so, uh, for everybody who's new uh, here and Steve, I'm having a little echo issue still, but here's what we're going to do. I'll just mute as each other are talking. We'll handle it. But, um, but, um, as uh, for people uh, who are new, uh, you've spoken uh, at our masterminds. You've our been masterminds. on the show a couple of times. Tell us a little bit about you. About you. Yeah, I started started this journey just last December. December, I believe that. I believe that. And I actually had my first my first wake up legend about two months months. And this is this has been about eight months in the making. Nine months now, and. If you guys don't know me, I'm Steve. I run a company called Cashflow Marketer. And I started with Legendary back in October, did nothing with it until December, where I went to the live event, their mastermind. And amazingly, I went with my wife, who was seven months pregnant. And from there, we were, you know, we were real quiet. We were sitting in the back of the room and I just decided in that day, I broke through a board that day. I was making $15 an hour, if you can believe that at this. Just, I worked from home, but it was not fun. I was making hundreds of calls a day. And I told myself, that's it. And as soon as I left the event, I got to work. I even got to work during the event. And 16 days later, I walked away from my job and haven't gone back since. And I've been fortunate enough to to earn a lot of different awards and build an amazing business here. And most importantly, have more time, family, family, have more time with our son, have all the time in the world. with him. That's what our, that's what our companies does really help helping people have more time that they love, not miss the, not much those precious moments. So extremely grateful to be here for the third, the third time. That's super cool, man. Cool, man. Um, um, are echoing, are echoing kind of just going in and out and in. that's okay um we'll we'll yeah we'll get the mute thing so um actually can you unmute yourself cool i'm gonna just control the mute action on my end but if you mute yourself then it won't let me unmute you so it's like a whole damn thing over here but anyway yeah i mean when you sat at the mastermind and uh I just, I, you were so unassuming, not that it was a weird thing or anything, but it was just like, oh man, I wonder what this guy's up to, you know? And, uh, it was really cool to see you just run, basically sprint out of that mastermind and, uh, go crazy. So that was cool. Um, I think for, for me watching you go from that place to then speaking with a lot of conviction at the mastermind was really cool too. I felt like you were you had a a ton of conviction and a ton of energy and excitement and um not just conviction but clarity like you were really clear about hey here's exactly what I did here's what I thought was awesome a lot of times when people come speak at masterminds to people who are you know beginners or just starting to figure things out 
um, they might be five or six years down the road and they've lost touch sometimes with the moment somebody's starting and what are the important actions. And I think you hadn't lost touch by that point of that mastermind. You still haven't lost touch with that now, but that's that man, that's just such a really uh, powerful experience to hear somebody speak to people who need to know that information right now. And yeah, that was just super cool to me. And I thought it, what a unique experience, such a rare experience. Um, but doing that all so fast and having such explosive growth, um, what, what was that like? I mean, what, what was that like? What were some things that you did that you felt like were keys to your success? And then also like, what were some things you wish you maybe hadn't done or maybe would do differently? So I'm going to actually talk about some of the failure failures I've made in eight month eight month journey. I'm going to start there because I think a lot of people talk about their successes and how they did it. It's important to trap traps. You're learning, you're learning digital marketing for all the year. Digital marketing moves, moves fast, fast, fast as light stuff stuff at the, the mastermind previously that I had shared with others. Some of it's obsolete, obsolete. And so what I'm about what I'm about to share with you is I, I it's going to be the most be the this is this is going to impact impact wake up legendary the entire year. So here's what I here's what I need to know to know. I want I want to start by most most people when they go out and they out and they start marketing th marketing thing have about I about I learned about sales. So building sales, building sales funnel. If you don't know what a sales funnel is, this was one of the biggest mistakes I made just recently. Steve, can you do you have? Can you hold your phone, like, uh, hold it like this? Let's see if that fixes the audio. The audio. Is that better? How's that? No, it's it's too cracky. Do you have any other device you can sign in on an iPad or a computer or something? Yeah, yeah, I'd have to go switch. I'd have to go switch over, but I can do okay. that. Let's switch over. <laughs> um, sorry about the audio, guys. Um, we'll get him back. We'll get him back. You guys thought you were the only people in the world with uh with techie issues, right? <laughs> um, we'll get him back on because I'm excited to hear from Steve about what's been impacting his business and what. Uh, failures he's had and what things he would like to do differently but um, yeah must, it, it it could be weird we played around with a lot of the audio and a lot of the stuff so we'll get him back in he's going to come back in on a laptop or something we'll find out we'll see what he comes back on um, but Steve yeah when he came to the mastermind and spoke um, he, he came down to Orlando and literally just months after uh, his experience in Orlando, um, he, man, he, he took off, he set some records that we've ever seen in terms of just leads and sales. And he's been consistent ever since then. Sometimes when people take off and have a huge, uh, round of success, it, it tapers off a little bit over time and he hasn't really tapered off. He's been very consistent, which is a Maybe more impressive than anything else is that level of consistency over time. And um, he's a beast of a marketer. Uh, one thing that I'd like to do, here's what I'd like to do for you all to type in a question that you might have for Steve. And as he comes back in, what I think might be cool is uh, sharing a few of the questions that you wonder about. Well, you know, Steve, you've you've went out, and this is a in full income disclaimer. Most people who purchase any sort of training online aren't going to earn six figures online, but Steve has, and uh, he's set up a really successful online business. What would you like to hear from? I mean, what questions would you have for him? What kind of um, things are you wondering about his success and uh, what he's done to achieve that success? I'd love. Uh, not just for me to have my questions out for him, but also for you guys as well. I got to sneeze. In. Excuse me. Um, type them in the comments if you've got any. Uh, Keith wants to know what's his routine for staying motivated and keeping the fire alive. I like that. 
keeping the fire alive. I'm gonna raise my chair up a little bit. There we go. Um, what's the most important thing that's contributed to your journey? How he got followers? Ooh, see, these are great questions. How many niches did Steve start? What tools does he currently use? That's a good question. Yeah, we should. Uh, let's let's when he gets back in here, let's ask him a few of these questions. Um, let's see. Let's pop over here. Um, for Steve, what was the biggest lesson you learned at the beginning of your journey? What favorite platform? What platform was he successful on? Uh, he had a lot of success on Facebook. And maybe we could talk a little bit about that too. Um, what does consistency look like? You guys got good questions. I love it. What's his daily routine? Ooh, that's good. How long did it take to get your first thousand subscribers? <clears throat> tools and apps are you following the strategy of reposting your tiktoks on other social media platforms how did you keep yourself motivated especially when you have <laughs> well um i think the thing part of steve's success and some of the success that i see from people who come to our masterminds is um what, what Steve did is take exactly what he, he boiled down. He kind of sat in the back and he was just sitting, taking notes throughout this mastermind that we had. And, um, and what Steve did was he kind of boiled it down to an action plan. So he, he boiled down, what do I need to do? He got a real action plan in place and he said, okay, look, here's the thing. Um, I, I have I know exactly what it is that I need to do. I know exactly day by day I need to create X amount of video pieces of content. I know where I'm going to get my inspiration for that content. I know what's worked in the past. And um, I'm going to boil it down to an action plan. And then he, he actually just stuck with it for about 90 days. Said, hey, I'm going to give this a real hard shot for... I don't know if he said he was going to commit to 90 days or, or 180 days or what it was. But... Um, yeah, he's 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 a he's a uh, monster. But Damien, <laughs> Damien asks, how did he conquer his audio problems? Uh, yeah, I mean, good question. We're about to find out. I hope. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Um, can we get a copy of his action plan? You know, um. We probably we probably don't have that one like he pro I mean he probably doesn't have that like scanned or something, but maybe we could unpack exactly what it is that he did. He he definitely is omnipresent. That is for sure. He's all over the place. He's creating content everywhere. Um, he didn't really enter in a special mentor program. That was a secret mentor program. Uh, he had purchased our mastermind. So he really just went through the blueprints and, um, that's how he had most of his success with that. I think, uh, how did you ramp up and sustain your video production content machine, man? I mean, he just went after it. He just, he just went after it. Um, this is too good a show not to hear it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get through the techie stuff. Techie stuff is easy. The more you're in this industry, um, the techie stuff, that eventually becomes easy. I shouldn't say that it just is easy, but the techie stuff is... is uh, You'll eventually figure that out to the point where it doesn't seem like or feel that heavy or feel that overwhelming. You'll eventually push through that, so... I wouldn't worry too much about the techie stuff. You'll eventually power through it, but um, let's see here. Let's see if we got him. Let's see if we got him. Bang. Steve, what up? Hey, can you hear me better? Loud and clear. Fantastic. Loud and clear. Uh, let's see. Hang on one second. Can you go to your video settings down at the bottom and just make sure you're on 1080? Or 720 is cool. Yeah. Either of those will work. Oh, we're rocking and rolling, man. Go. 
Audio sounds beautiful. All right. Love it. We're back, baby. We're back. Steve, I threw an audible in and uh, <laughs> here's what I did. I okay. asked, I asked, uh, you let me know if this is okay with you. Uh, yeah. I actually asked our, I pulled our entire audience here and I said, Hey, what do you guys want to know from Steve? And um, I got lots of questions and I'd love to do a quick fire question session with Steve. If that's cool with you. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Cool. Bring we'll it keep on. you on your toes. Let's see what happens. Uh, all, right. all right. Bang. Here we go. I'm curious about this. What's your routine for staying motivated and keeping the fire alive every day? Do you have anything? What's the secret sauce, Steve? Oh, that is an amazing question. You know what? Number one, it's my son. More than anything, it's family. I wake up every day. The ability to wake up every single day and see family, it's a constant reminder of this mission. And then... That's just that's just what gets me gets me started gets me fired up every day. Once I get in here and I actually start interacting with our community, it's the people every single day. Once you build your community, you start building people, core people who rely on you. There's you can't quit on them. You actually have a sense of accountability from the people who are expecting your best, from the people who are relying on you. you when you build those relationships, you can't leave them hanging. And so those are the two things that really motivate me every single day. Wow. That's cool. I love it. How, uh, when you were first getting started, how'd you got, how did you get followers? You know what? So I'll tell you exactly how I got followers. And then I'll tell you what I do nowadays. Cause there's a massive difference. Ooh. So I started, I started December, mid December after going to the wake up legendary and I had zero followers. None of you knew me in December. Nobody, even less people knew me in October when I signed up for this, but some people I, forget that everybody has a day zero. Yeah. They, they ev every single person starts with zero followers. So if you're thinking you need a big following, you don't every single person started with zero at some point. Even the biggest people like the Kardashians started at zero. And to answer your question, I started off, I left the legendary and some of the advice that was at the master was make three to four videos every single day. That was how I started out. I poured out content. I researched three to four videos every single day. I did that for about seven months every single day up until recently. So I've made almost Gosh, 900 videos since then. Jeez. Now, I know. I'm not telling you guys to do that because I realized that that approach isn't, isn't the right approach. The thing is, the, you don't need volume with your videos to build followers. What more people need is not volume, but value. The difference between what I used to do and what I do now is what I used to do was I was focused on a sales funnel approach. I was focused on finding a big group of people here, getting them subscribed, having a little bit of a smaller group, helping convert even a smaller amount. You know, it forms like an upside down pyramid. And I used video, three to four videos a day to reach that massive group of people, to get them subscribed to the email, to start converting sales. And I realized what happens when you focus on the sales funnel upside down approach is that you end up with a very transactional relationship with, with your leads. So Matt, if I could, I want to take a quick, I want to take a little bit extra time and I want to show you an example of this. Yeah. So I have a glass here. Let's, let's say I've got this glass and I've got this water bottle. Let's say this water bottle is, your leads. These are all of the leads that you have right here. This is like your pipeline. And then the little tip of the water bottle here is your sales funnel. So I started out and I was trying to reach all of these people, this big pool of people. It's kind of like filling up the water bottle at the refrigerator. You're filling it up your pipeline with people. 
what I would do is I would funnel them through like this into the glass. And this glass right here, think of this kind of like, this is kind of like the people who have purchased from, uh, from us. These are the transactional people who have actually made a purchase. The problem with this is you have these people sit, you have these. He's gone. I think <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh man, I can't. Here we go. Uh, I think, wow, I wonder if he did that on purpose. Everybody just said, look at this. Dang, it was getting good too. Uh, what did he say? Dang, it got to the good part. LOL, just when it was getting good. I was on the edge of my seat. Just then the magic is going to be exposed. I'm now stuck in the bottom of the glass. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Steve. Oh, my God. Technology. It's let us down today, my friends. It's let us down today. He'll be back. His His laptop probably just died. But... Here's where he was getting with this, guys. What he was getting to was uh, before in the... <laughs> We're back. <laughs> it is just one of those days, I guess. Dude, literally <laughs> literally all of, all of the comments here were just like, just when I was on the edge of my seat. Uh, dang, he was building on a good one. All right, give it to us. Okay, give it to what us. A Bring it back. So... You've got your glass. These are the people who have bought from you. But here's the issue is that, look at this. The water can't go up and back into your pipeline. That's extremely important because this means the people in the glass, they're just there. The problem with that is that they're just stale, stagnant. Mm. You're not getting it. You're not delivering any additional value to them. And so you're out again. And you're off looking for new leads again. You're off paying money for paid ads. You're doing more videos to reach more of these people. That's the wrong approach. You don't yep. want to keep reaching these people. You want to take, be able to take these people in the glass who have already purchased from you and be able to recycle them back up into, into, uh -huh. your, into your pipeline. Yep. And what's really important about this is that the way I just described is not a sales funnel. It's called a flywheel. And the flywheel design for marketing is pretty, it's about the most cutting edge marketing that's happening right now. And it's marketing is moving in a direction where you no longer are running people through a funnel to get a transaction, to go back to strangers and try to sell them again. What you're doing with a flywheel is you're taking the people who have already purchased from you and you're engaging with them through conversation and then you're delighting them and giving them so much value that they're actually going out and they're telling their friends about you. They're telling their family about you and word of mouth is actually starting to fill this up for you. Word of mouth is filling it up and purchasing it for you and right. it empowers you it allows you to be able to work less you get to work less because your delighted customers are going out and they're telling all their friends they're telling all their family about you and their friends and family are going out and purchasing from you they're joining your community they're engaging with you so you actually have to do less work than People who are focused on that sales funnel, people who are focused on constantly going out and getting new leads. It's not about going out and getting new leads. It's yeah. about engaging your existing leads and only creating content that attracts people. So mm. I mentioned a flywheel. Think of a circle. It starts up here at attract people with your video content, for example. Yep. And then you're going to engage them in actual conversations 
really find out their pain points, find out their struggles, and then going along the flywheel, you're going to delight them with the solution that you have. So I will give so much value to people that even if I don't receive any value We're back. We're back again. I think it's just your internet. It it might it might just be. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. So I want you guys to write down and remember that you want to attract people with your videos, with your content. Your goal is not to create a video to sell a person on what you have. You're not selling them on your offer with your video. The only thing you're doing with whatever piece of content you create, a blog, a video, is to attract them. And you attract them by giving them so much value up front. Create content to start conversations with people. That's the only reason to create content. So... I started off to recap three to four videos a day. I was hustling real hard. Now I create maybe one video a day and I'll only make content if it is valuable. And I only make it to start conversations with people. Mm. What do you mean by that? I mean that when I create a piece of content, I don't, I don't create any more sort of cryptic secret, you know, Oh, find out what this is. It's not Mm. valuable enough to me. I create a piece of content that solves a problem right there on the spot. For instance, I created a piece of content just recently, and it's the seven places to promote your affiliate links to actually make money. Mm. It's an instant, it's an instant piece delivers instant value, and it starts conversations in, let's say, comments on Facebook. From there... I find out each and every person's pain point in my community. We have a system Mm. where you, if you're not having conversations every single day with people, if you're not asking them, what are you looking to achieve? What are you looking to accomplish? What are your pain points? And you're not finding these things out. Mm. That's why you're not, that's why your business is not growing because you're not having enough meaningful conversations. You're not building enough connections with people. You're not engaging Mm -hmm. with enough people every single day. When you engage with enough people and you show enough interest in others and you get them results, everything else, sales take care of themselves. People Mm. go out and talk about you. They rave about you. You don't have to buy advertising. You don't have to work really hard. You just have conversations all day, basically in messenger and you you build a business off of having conversations and building relationships and it's so much more meaningful to connect with people than to just drive them through a sales funnel send them over to an affiliate link and then on to the next stranger that's Mm. that's not the way of marketing anymore Hmm. yeah that makes sense i mean and even to a certain extent it anymore i mean it never really has been mm-hmm. but people are always going to turn to that model yeah uh, what, what so when you're out there when you say first of all creating value solving a problem uh give us an example of that but like let's let's take like a let's take like a niche of like uh like w- if i'm if i'm um I'm an affiliate, like I'm a, like I'm a digital marketer and I'm in the weight loss niche Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm creating videos and, and engaging with people. Like, give me an example of kind of like a piece of content I could create that would like solve a problem. I think that's what, those are your words, solve a problem. And then when you say engage with people, let's Mm -hmm. define that for the newbies who are here, new people to our community who aren't sure what that means. What do you mean engage with people? Um, yeah. cause, cause I think that that's a valid question. What, what would you walk us through that process? Okay. So 
you're in the weight loss niche. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go out. If I have no, if I have, if I haven't had those conversations, if you're brand new, it, you can go out to Google and use tool free tools, such as one called SEM rush, look up what people are asking about in Google. What sort of questions are they typing into Google? What are the most popular questions? One of them is probably how do I lose weight quickly? What you do from there is you write down that problem, how, that question, how do I lose weight quickly? And then you create, a, let's say a video, create a video that says, teach somebody a quick tip to lose weight quickly. Teach them something about, you know, something simple like ketosis. Teach them something that will get them an instant result. Maybe you tell them, you know what, this one exercise helped me lose 15 pounds in 20 days. Give them that video instantly. And then that starts the conversation. Got it. From, from there, what you want to do is as you start to solve these problems in video, people are going to come to you and they're going to ask you questions. When they're asking you questions, take note of what questions are getting asked the most in that niche. Okay. And then what you want to do is create actual an actual document, let's say like a PDF, solving that problem right up front. Tell them exactly what to do. Mm. Make it so good. Make You can do this in a Word document, but make that document so good that people think, God, I should be paying money for this right now. Right. You know, hack the value, stack the value, actually solve a problem. Don't leave them hanging at the end and say, oh, if you want more information here, head over to my funnel. Right. Actually solve their problem. Mm. When you said engaging, what I mean by engaging is simply conversations. Okay. Now, the headline for this video, for the event, I, for this video, I had said the 50,000 year old secret to make money online. That 50,000 year old secret I was talking about is language mm. and conversation. A lot of yeah. things change in marketing. A lot of things change in life conversation and human connection does not change. Hmm. That is something that is necessary in business. Business is people. Yes. And engaging just means having conversations with people every single day, being hmm. more interested in them. It may, whether it's through messenger, if you prefer the phone, if you prefer email, Wherever I I would say email is the best personally, okay. but having conversations every single day with people, engaging with people. If they've reached out to you, they see you as an authority. They see you as an influencer. Even if you only have one follower, they see you as an authority and an influencer. And it yep. means a lot when you reach out to them and you engage with them and you, the influencer, the authority actually ask them what's going on with you and how can I help solve your greatest problem? When they tell you your greatest, their greatest problem, you create a solution for them. If they yep. say, you know, I just, I need to lose this weight, create a solution, go research a solution right. and right. get back to them and say, Hey, you know what? I have this for you and I want to give this to you. I want you to have this. This will help you solve that problem you're having. And when it solves that problem, when it's, you know, a well-researched thing that you created and you help them solve that problem, they're going to tell everybody about it. They're going to go, if the person, for instance, wants to lose some weight because they have a wedding coming up in six months and they lose that weight and you helped them do it, they're going to tell everybody at that wedding about yeah. you about your company, about that product, they're going to share everything they have. They're going to spill it all. When people are saying, man, you look amazing. How did, how did you lose that weight? Wow. You look great. Oh my gosh. It was Matt Hetzel and his weight loss program that changed <laughs> my life. You wouldn't right. believe this guy. And I've had amazing conversations with him. He's like a friend to me. 
you, you can reach out to him. He responds. He's kind. He wants, he saw that they will, they will talk about you, rave about you and become one of your promoters. And when you have an army of promoters, people promoting you for free, you have to do less work. Your promoters go out and they tell other people about you and the virtuous cycle begins again because yep. then they tell someone about yep. you, you solve that person's problem, and then that person goes and tells people. And then you solve their problem, and they go and tell people. And that's how you start to work less, earn more, and deliver a ton of value to a ton of people every single day. Yep. You work less, you earn more, and you get to deliver value. What I mean, what could be better than having that sort of impact on people and still getting to be do the things you want with the people that you love the most. Yes. Uh, and that's how you experience all that exponential growth because mm -hmm. you're, you're focused more on, you said something, uh, something about um, uh, getting, getting people's interest or being mm -hmm. interested in them. And that goes to something that uh, something that Dave often says, which is focus more on being interested Mm -hmm. and less on being interesting like people mm -hmm. always want to be like oh i need to be like the kardashians or something you know like oh i've got to do something crazy but the truth is just being really interested in what people are actually what are the real problems that they want solved and how can you be the solution to that and yeah. something somebody earlier this week said is uh on monday we had a lady who's uh she's been coaching in the uh well, she's in the kind of like parenting niche. And mm -hmm. uh, so she does coaching with moms to declutter their houses. And she's got a really successful business in that coaching industry. And she said, um, she said, how can, how can I, what problems do they have? How can I solve them? And how can I show them that I'm the one to solve it now, right mm -hmm. now? Yep. And, uh, and I like how that leads into the whole conversation piece, especially, I think, especially for people who are newer and they're a beginner, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason I think that's so important, I'm just expounding on what you just said, but the reason I feel like that's so important is because when you first get started and you're getting moving, uh, you are actually wondering how do people word their problems? How do people state their problems? And if you get into conversation with 10 people, guess what? Now you go back to your marketing and your videos and your funnel and your all of your emails and everything. You can actually just take that language from your conversations and put it into your marketing. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly you're speaking the same language as, as a normal person rather than using marketing lingo, yeah. like industry lingo that no one really understands. Every Every industry has their own kind of lingo they use. But now you're speaking normal people speak <laughs> like normal. You said the word language yep. and um, normal spoken language or normal typed language. Uh, man, I think that that's so powerful. Um, so as you're as you're starting out and you're creating content that solves people's problems and then mm -hmm. you're bringing them into conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Here's the nuts and bolts piece that I think a lot of people are wondering, which is uh, if I go out and create a piece of content. How do I get a person who watches my video to get to engage with me, to, to, to reach out, to say something to me? Like, what do I do? Do I, do I say something in my video that it's a call to action? Do I put something in the comments that says, hey, here's what I want you to do? How do you, Steve, communicate to your audience and say, if you basically, if you'd like to learn more, I can help you. Here's what you do next. Mm -hmm. Well, the the structure of a successful video, basically it's four parts. You have the hook in the beginning. You have the problem you're addressing, how to solve it, the solution. And well, he's gone. <laughs> basically, you have a hook and actually – uh, I'm glad that he got booted there for a second because the hook, for those of you who are newer, you might not know what a hook is. A hook is a beginning where you bring somebody in and you sort of um, capture their attention. Uh, then you've got the 
You got the hook, the problem. Keep going. <laughs> you, got, you got the hook to bring them in, capture their attention, as Matt said. You've got the problem that you're addressing. You want to use the exact words of the people who have already messaged you, whatever their problem is. You have how you're going to solve it, the solution. And then you have the call to action at the end. The call to action, you should probably use words that your community is already asking you, asking you for. So hmm. if, they're, if they're saying to you, how do I get started? Just make your call to action to get started. Use their exact words back in the call to action. To get started, hmm. just send, leave a comment. To get started, DM, send a DM. Sim simple stuff like that. And if you deliver enough value, people are just going to naturally, you know, it's social media. People are going to naturally reach out and say, hey, you know what? I heard you say that and I, I wanted to know more about this. Can you expound on it? Can you tell me a little bit more on top of that? It's almost a natural flow. So yeah. don't don't obsess over the call to action. Don't obsess over the the wording. Just tell people what you want them to do next. That's what a call to action is. But make sure that you solve a problem in that video and that content. Spend most of the time solving that problem. Okay. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. I think um, I, I think it – and that's such a beautiful thing. I mean, if you can really solve somebody's problems mm -hmm. in your content – Man, that's powerful because if you can do it once, then people are going to have more can more belief, a deeper level of belief. Yeah. And I think what's the word? I think here's a here's a powerful word that comes to mind as you explain this is the word certainty, mm -hmm. um, meaning when people have certainty, that is that is basically the holy grail of marketing. When somebody feels a level of certainty when when you solve their problem or you solve – maybe they don't have one problem, but you solve one of their problems. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're like, wow, that – I he just saw – like I've been wondering this. I haven't been able to solve this, and I feel like he just solved my problem. Yeah. Now, could he solve more problems? Now he wants – now he's got, for instance, a, a product or a course or something. Wow, mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, I have a level of certainty that, you know what, he's already solved my problem for free through his content. Maybe he's got something else. And yeah. then, boom, they purchase. And again, level of certainty, because mm -hmm. now you're solving multiple of their problems. Anyway, I just think that that's a powerful idea and a powerful, um, man, that's so, that's it, so. It good. is, and you know, in, in a lot of niches out there, what you guys will see, is a lot of these people who come to you, They've already seen a lot of other things online about that particular thing, most likely. You're, you're probably not the first person they've seen. And in my experience, a lot of people doing you know, affiliate marketing, a lot of niches out there, they're really not delivering a lot of value. They're focused on that sales funnel I mentioned earlier. How do I get the most leads and get build an email list and drive down as many conversions as I can down here? And then once people buy from them, they, they don't hear from them. Or even at the top, maybe someone reaches out and says, hey, you know, how can I lose weight for this wedding I have coming up in six months? And that influencer, that person never responds to them, forwards them over to a virtual assistant or sends them through an automated bot. And I wanted to tell you guys this, too, is that through this journey over the past eight months, a huge mistake I made at one point was I set up a very intricate artificial AI bot system in our community in Facebook Messenger. I actually used I used a program to set it up. It was very complicated. It led through all kinds of trainings and things. It was called the cash flow bot. And what I found from doing that for about a month and a half was that engagement not only dropped, but it became a very robotic and cold community. And it, it showed people were angry. It, it didn't work well. It was very mechanical. You know, somebody would reach out and say, they, they would say, screw, screw you. You're, you know, you're a scam or whatever they say. And then the bot would reach out to him and say, hey, this is Steve. Great to meet you. And how are you doing? And what can I solve for you? And it just didn't, it didn't make sense. There wasn't a human connection, a human element there. And so 
what I, the mistake I made was trying to make it more efficient for myself and for our business at the expense of our customers, our prospects, at the expense of everybody in the company. I went to make it more efficient for myself with some automated systems that were just did not work well. So if you're thinking, how can I automate this as much as possible? It's a, it's good, but don't, don't search for all these. Don't try to make your life so easy that it actually makes your prospects lives really difficult. Because if you remember that attract, engage, delight, you're going to cause a lot of friction in those three things. You're going to cause a lot of friction after you attract them. The engagement's going to cause a lot of friction and you're not going to delight people, which is going to ultimately, it's going to stall your business growth. So you have to have those conversations with people, those genuinely interested conversations in others. And don't seek to automate things so much and make your life so convenient that you're hurting people who you could be helping. And I don't know if I cut out. I'm muted. Oh, <laughs> okay. The only, I I, in right our there. world... The only the only way we were able to really get those uh, those bots to work, and mm -hmm. we ended up running into lots of issues with the bots. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook didn't love them, number one. Um, but uh, yeah, the only way we were really able to get those to work was to go from you know a, a small level of engagement to start, mm -hmm. like just one touch that was really vague, and then um, and then getting them like fun basically funneling people based on another response into real conversations yeah. using it as basically just a tiny little gate that's mm -hmm. easy to push open and that that was really the only way but yeah same thing it's like you know you're going to get so many responses that are basically just not really human and mm -hmm. not really conversational at all i uh so i feel like you know i man i feel like um, in my, in my experience, in my world, um, as I watch you and others create content that, that drives leads and well, solves problems and, and drives lots of lead flow and gets people really interested. I, I feel like there's this, um, sort of hidden secret mm -hmm. that, uh, a lot of people who start out and really grow and grow fast is they're willing to take the time to do that type of engagement. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people on here right now, for instance, who are like, no, I would take the time. I just can't figure out how the hell to get people to respond to me. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think um, being really straightforward and really clear, I keep getting these, um, I keep getting people, we keep getting people on this show and a common theme that keeps coming up is clarity. People keep coming back and saying, um, People, people keep coming back to this show and saying, I just learned to become really clear with people. And your version of that seems to be, I learned to sol help solve people's problems mm -hmm. rather than being cute and uh, rather than, you know, um, rather than rather than being sort of like a little confusing or a little vague with my videos mm -hmm. i learned to become really clear with people mm -hmm. um and what happens in that case is the level of clarity then increases conversion rates yeah Meaning there's there's the people who are coming through are so clear about what's going on that's why a lot of times when people create long form content um but it's a little bit more vague and it's a little bit more kind of curiosity based, like mm -hmm. on YouTube, for instance, um, they draw, they have high numbers of traffic and their actual conversions are tiny, like yeah. very, very tiny, tons of leads, very small amounts of sales. So I just find that interesting. Uh, I, I find that really interesting because, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I think that there's a little hidden gem in there about marketing and about um, conversion specifically. Um, yeah. For, you, for you know people, what I see yeah. in you know what I see too in a lot of of different marketers is 
I see people create content because I do a lot of research. And one thing I see a lot is I see the piece of content and I go down and I look through the comments and there are a lot of marketers out there whose customers and clients are complaining in their comments saying, you know what, I'm here again. I've reached out five times. I don't hear anything. I can't stand this. Never responds. And it'll be, you know, tens or dozens or hundreds of comments. Never responds to me. Never hear from them. They told me to comment. I commented. I don't hear from them. And so that, if you remember this class, that's a great example of these people just sitting at the bottom and not, they're not delivering any value back to the top, that they're not refilling the person's business and they're not delivering any value. They're just sitting there and they're actually hurting that business by, you can have, a, you know, millions of followers, but if they're not, if you're not engaging with people, if you're not reaching out to them, if you're not, if your comments aren't filled with your responses, for instance, then those people are just, they're, they're wasted energy. And that's where a lot of sales are being lost. And that's where a lot of people aren't getting the help that they need and that they, they deserve. So I just wanted to add that little caveat in. Yeah. Oh, God, that's good, man. That's really good. Um, oh, well, I don't know if I could have said it any better than that. Um, <laughs> That is the, uh, that is the epic exit. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I was just going to wrap our show. Cause I just looked yeah. at the camera and I just said, I just said, uh, I couldn't have said it any better than that. And that was a great note to end on dude. And yeah. we made it through all the different techie, whatever bullshit. And guess what? Here's, here's Seriously. a little, here's a little learning lesson for everybody who's here. It number one thing is it doesn't really matter. Um, mm -hmm. that was, yeah, Mike just said it. Mike said that was a total mic drop. Yeah. Um, it, it actually doesn't matter, especially in the world of online, especially when you're getting started, especially when you're, um, just, it's your first time doing anything online. Like maybe you're getting started as a, as a relationships and dating coach or, you know, whatever. Next week we have somebody on who's who's grown a nine thousand follower account uh, in the dog training niche, and um, has lots of affiliate traffic. All of this kind of stuff. Whatever you're getting started in doesn't matter. Um, the main thing, the the most important thing, is to remember that the techie shit, the the logistics of your funnel. Mm -hmm. The all of that stuff you can work out as long as you focus on solving people's problems. And if you focus on that, if you really place your focus and time and attention on that alone, man, that is an absolute like straight away. That is the solution. So, yeah. Steve, thanks so much for coming back on. We'll have you back on again, of course, uh, in a couple months if you'd like to come back on. And um, uh, we'll, we'll get even more gold nuggets from you as you learn and keep growing and, and keep building your business. You're uh, about to hit another humongous milestone with us, and that's cool. And um, you've got a rocking business. So congrats. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I'll, I'll see you guys in December, too, at the, the live event. That's going to be amazing. Hell, yeah. Let's do it. All right, guys. Um, let's see. Where can we follow Steve? Uh, should we have people find you on Facebook? You know, Facebook's the best. I prefer oh. it because we can have conversations that way. Beautiful. Love it. All right. Thanks a lot, Steve. Peace out. You got it. Have a good rest of your Wednesday, and uh, I'll get people over to your Facebook. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, guys, if you want to follow Steve, if you want to see what he's up to, if you want to say, hey, saw you on Wake Up Legendary, uh, go find him. It's Cash Flow Marketer. You just go to Facebook. You sit down. You type in Cash Flow Marketer. And guess what? You're going to find Steve. Um, and also, if you want, you can text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. You'll get a quick little tiny teensy weensy text message reminder every single time that we go live. You'll get a text message. You won't get a text message letting you know that um, there's an earthquake. 
You won't get a text message reminder that the stock market's crashing. You won't get a text message reminder about anything else. Just simply a text message that says, come live with us on Wake Up Legendary. All right. Peace out, everybody. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. We'll see you back here same time, same place tomorrow and Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Don't miss the show. Go find Steve on Facebook, Cash Flow Marketer. And uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow.